from the outdoor that has appeared in Hardbart, Business Week, TechCrunch, Venture Beat, and Giga Om. It's Larry Chiang. Lecture 9 is meant to be a standalone lecture for your entry point into CS183, Computer Science 183E. E is an edit. So this lecture conjoins, combines, summarizes, dovetails these following concepts. Entrepreneurship, intrapreneurship, entrepreneurship specifically for engineers, and the concept of doing things that are entrepreneurial inside of a company, thus what intrapreneurship is, where we're going to explore why the company that we're editing died or was dying until everyone quit, which guaranteed it of dying, into how we are involved with one other engineer or a team of engineers to try to edit and practice on this cadaver. So what Lecture 9 goes at the heart at is doing entrepreneurship not as a founder, practicing entrepreneurship not as an initial co-founder, but as a person who's an engineer who's going into a messy situation. And as an engineer who, I can speak firsthand to the fact that oftentimes we are meant to perform a task with little or no funding, little or, little or no boss administrative support, little or no resources at hand, which, which makes engineering perfect for a springboard to go into entrepreneurship. In fact, a lot of times when we're editing something that died, the people obviously never did distribution, but they also typically were not engineers. So they're trying to outsource the engineering to India or China or Romania or wherever developers are. And they're also trying to outsource the sales to a VP of sales thus Stephen Blank's startup death spiral. So Lecture 9 seeks to combine, conjoin, uh, intertwine these concepts of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and engineering and, as a springboard. And what we're going to be practicing doing is doing distribution on a cadaver, doing entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship inside of a dead entity inside of a cadaver where we get to practice and build our entrepreneurship muscles where chapter nine of my mentors book coincidentally is everyone is a little bit entrepreneurial everyone is partially entrepreneurial the definition of engineering is given a task to do with little or no resources little or no funding and sometimes little or no uh, support from a boss and definitely not a staff of people that are under you. So you've got very little personnel resources, no money, and in essence, no support. Yet you are tasked with solving and engineering a solution. That's what engineering, that's what the definition is, is we don't, we're not going to give you funding to try to solve your problem. You, the engineer who makes $10,000 US a month, you're the one who's tasked with it. And if you've heard of the concept of a 10X engineer, a team, a pre-assembled team of two to five engineers is so uh, massively effective to be able to do the work of an entire stadium of people. No joke, when they say software is gonna eat the world, that's what they mean is two to five people coding. So. That's the definition that we are going to work with as engineering. Now, we're gonna plug in the engineering along with the distribution, which is what CS183E is about, is, is activating and knowledge activating CS183S sales, CS of course standing for computer science, where an engineer who's going to hack distribution and amplify and better distribute the the cadaver that we are currently residing in. Now, when I say cadaver, we're editing a startup that is dead. We're resuscitating, doing CPR on an entity that has passed away. So 
As an engineer, we are in a unique position to be able to be partially entrepreneurial. Bunch of different kinds of entrepreneurs. There is the accidental entrepreneur, the managing entrepreneur. So the accidental entrepreneur is the entrepreneur who backs into something that literally hits them on top of the head. The two dudes from Intel, when they left Fairchild Semiconductor, they were semi-purposefully accidental entrepreneurs. There's also the operator entrepreneur. They're operating a small business and they're grinders. They're uh, operating some core thing that may not be super sexy, but is a type of entrepreneur. What we are practicing doing is we are practicing being sales engineers or practicing doing technical sales, which is why we're exercising these things inside of a dead startup because there's no way we can mess it up and there's only upside so that way we have a lot of confidence to go practice. There's a bunch of other different kinds of entrepreneurs. There's the media darling entrepreneur who's got the pedigree and the venture funding and all they do is media. I don't really, we don't really know what they do, but they always make the 30 under 30 list or the 40 under 40, or if you've recently seen the 10 under 10, the 10 entrepreneurs under 10. That's supposed to be meant tongue in cheek. I didn't write it, it's out there. So media darlings all the way down to the tow truck entrepreneur a slew of different entrepreneurs that we can all learn from, but we as engineers, we're basically in short practicing doing technical sales. This is something that's gonna seem eye-poppingly unreal, but management will sometimes frown upon distribution efforts. Let me repeat that. Sometimes management wants to keep people from doing their job. And that's because when we distribute as a uh, employee advocate or as a frontline engineer, we can sometimes using these sales hacks that are fresh uh, right from the horse's mouth out of CS183B as in boy lecture five, the Peter Thiel lecture. Once we apply some of these Stanford engineering uh, best sales practices, we can start rubbing a lot of people the wrong way in our jobs. And that's not necessarily a good thing because have you heard of the expression, good work happens despite management's efforts? Well, oftentimes management would much rather have an internal meeting to talk about internal deliverables versus having people get out of the building, as Professor Blank would say, get out of the building to perform external deliverables. Internal deliverables versus external deliverables is a huge component in why sometimes management keeps us engineers from doing distribution, which is why we are going to practice inside of lecture nine, we're going to practice without the management of the, the burden of having to do, deal with a bunch of internal meetings before we try to augment at one or two conferences. In fact, I have this theory that a bunch of startups died because they'd rather do an internal meeting than go to Denver, Colorado to do an Airbnb hack of the DNC where the DNC is gonna, Democratic National Convention 2007, they're gonna run out of housing and so why not try to sign up apartments to then do uh, sofa surfing or uh, bed letting or bed uh, mattress rental by the overnight. Not even joking, Airbnb, that's how they started. They, according to Paul Graham, always lived out of their suitcases because they were always trying to get external deliverables. That's what lecture nine is, is helping you practice without a future manager saying to you, hey, stop doing some of this distribution stuff, you're gonna make me look bad. So. What this is a precursor to is you wanna get so familiar with the practice of doing distribution that later on you can be so comfortable with your distribution muscles that you'll be able to countermeasure and parlay and mitigate and dilute your future boss's efforts to try to curtail your awesome sauce. 
And that's the subject for the next one, which is asking for permission or asking for forgiveness. And remember, these are all under the umbrella of everyone's partially entrepreneurial. Permission forgiveness, permission forgiveness. So in a startup, people that sometimes actually want to create a hierarchy, uh, a system of checks and balances versus where everyone is at the front lines, which that's what a startup is. Everyone is at the front lines. So this, this segment is specifically on asking for permission, asking for forgiveness. And the old motto was, we don't necessarily want to ask for permission. We just want to ask for forgiveness. Let me repeat that. We don't want to ask for permission. We just want to ask for forgiveness. Now, the, the goal of that statement is to cause and stimulate execution. So not asking for permission, meaning a boss will just want to stomp on your innovation of doing something entrepreneurial. So the forgiveness part is after the good work is done, then the theory goes, well, then the boss will forgive you because of all these awesome results and you're lauded. You actually don't want to ask for either permission nor forgiveness. That's the new quote. So let me repeat that. You neither want to ask for permission nor do you want to ask for forgiveness. In fact, I've written an incredibly detailed checklist blog post on how to never ask for permission. And in short, this is how you do it. You want to update the boss or the anchor entity from lecture eight or the anchor plus satellite, you're the satellite. So you want to constantly update as if you are a FedEx package. You want to provide bursts of updates so that way if the boss or the host entity or the anchor concept, the anchor that you are the satellite to, has an ability to say, hey, I don't like that particular thing. But you're providing literally a tidal wave of these updates via email, via tweets, via WordPress. And so what you're doing is you're constantly documenting work, plotting forward and serving notice. So that way they don't have to say, oh, I give you permission to do uh, that after party. They're not giving you that permission, but you are plotting forward anyway and you're documenting it so that way you can say later on, hey, don't be blaming me. I've been updating you this whole time. Thus, that eliminates your need to apologize because they've been getting updates all along. So let me recap uh, permission forgiveness. You want to update people a ton, over update people and send terse bursts of texts, emails, tweets, WordPress blog posts that summarize updates so that way there isn't a surprise for the host entity. CS183 e-editing practicing. So the practice of the, the edit, the practice of distribution is meant for you to practice being semi-entrepreneurial and then go uh, ROTJ, go retire on the job somewhere. Some of these things that you're doing as far as technical sales and distribution under Computer Science 183 e-edit is so difficult for even an econ major to do. It's super difficult for a literate major that has no other choice but to go sell or do sales or do business. And CS itself is also very hard. So when you combine the two together, you've got a subset of skills that is very much the the creme de la creme, the the best cream, the best of the best, because you're able to combine both. And that's what this practice is meant to do. And so if CS183 E Lecture 9 is your first entree point, I recommend that you uh, peruse, explore, and practice uh, CS183 E uh, Lecture 1. There's also 20 other lectures inside of CS183 S is in sales, which is a sequel concept to CS183 B Lecture 5, where Peter Thiel talks about after you design a great product that sells itself, 
you want to add in a bunch of sales effort that's up into the right so a product that sells itself along with a massive amount of sales uh, effort that is a winning combination i wish you lots of luck in practicing for cs183e